In this video, we're going to be going over examples of derivatives involving the chain rule. So we use the chain rule when we're trying to take the derivative of a function that can be written as the composition of two other functions. So you kind of have a function inside of a function. So in order to do this, you need to take the derivative of your outer function and then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. So if we have this uh, function that can be written f of g, then we need to take the derivative of the function f and then multiply it by the derivative of the function g. So this first term is the derivative of what I'll call the outer function. Sometimes it's easy to visualize it if you see it as an outer function. And then we need to multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. Okay, so for example, if we have the function y equals 3x plus 2 all cubed, then our outer function just looks like something cubed. So you just have something that is being cubed, and then inside of that something, that u is 3x plus 2. So what we want to find is the derivative of this function y with respect to x. Okay, so y is a function of x. So we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x. But it's in order to do this, we need to first find the derivative of y with respect to u and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. And so you can kind of see writing it this way, if we want dy dx, these du's, you can think of them as kind of canceling. And then we're left with what we want, which is dy dx. But this, it's easier to do it this way. So our dy du times du dx, or the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, well, we can just go find those. So dy du, in this case, y equals u cubed, that's just 3u squared. And then du dx, that's pretty easy too, that's just 3. So now we can plug in dy du is 3u squared, and then du dx is just 3, so this is 9u squared. But we don't want our answer in terms of u, we want it in terms of x, because we want dy dx. So now we just take our u and plug it back in. And when we do that, we'll get 9 times our u, which is 3x plus 2, and that's all squared. So this is our derivative of this entire function y. So for our first example, we have y equals a function of u, and then we have u as a function of x. And so we want to find the derivative of our function y in terms of x, but we need to do it one derivative at a time. So dy dx is going to equal the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And again, you can think of this as your du's canceling and leaving over your dy dx. And so we just need to find each of these individual derivatives and multiply them together. So dy du is just going to be 8 and du dx, well, we've got to bring out our 1 fourth, bring down our exponent of 2, and lower that to 1. And then 2 over 4, well, that's just 1 half, so we have x over 2. And then we can plug in. So dy du is just 8 times the derivative du dx, which is just x over 2. 8 over 2 is just 4, so this is 4x. Our next example, we have y equals sine of u, and our inner function u is e to the minus x. So again, our chain rule, if we want dy dx, we need to first take the derivative of with y with respect to u, and then multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. So we can find these really quickly, dy du, derivative of sine is just cosine, and remember that's going to be cosine of u, du dx, we'll just bring down a minus sign, b 
e to the minus x. And now we can just plug in. So dy du is cosine u times minus e to the minus x. Or I'll just bring my minus e to the um, minus x out front like this. And for my cosine, I need to plug u back in. So I need to take this and plug it back in here. Okay, so that's going to be e to the minus x. Okay, so it's really right in here. Okay, our next example, we have y equals minus cosecant of u, where u is 2 over x minus 6x. Okay, so again, we want the derivative of y with respect to x. So we need to find the derivative of y with respect to u and multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, so I'm going to first rewrite my u in an easier way to take the derivative. So this is going to be 2x to the minus 1 minus 6x. Now if I find my dy du, um, this is just the derivative of minus cosecant u, which is just bring my minus sign out front. And then the derivative of cosecant u has another minus sign, cosecant u times cotangent u. And the derivative of u with respect to x, well, I bring out my 2 in front, bring down my minus 1 exponent, and lower that by 1. And then the second term has just a minus 6 for the derivative. Or this is minus... 2 over x squared minus 6. So now I can just plug these derivatives in to my chain rule. And this will be dy du is going to be positive cosecant u cotangent u times du dx, which is minus 2 over x squared minus 6. And now I need to plug in my u Actually, I'm going to plug in this one and for both of these u's. So I'm going to bring my, I'm also going to bring this term to the front. So this will give me a minus 2 over x squared minus 6 times cosecant of u, which is this big thing, 2 over x minus 6x times cotangent of u, which again is 2 over x minus 6x. Next example, we have y equals square root of 2u, where u is sine of x. So my chain rule, dy dx is dy du times du dx. So I just need to find these derivatives. y I want to rewrite as the square root of 2, bring the number out front, times u to the power 1 half. Okay, so now my dy du, just bring the number out front, square root of 2 is just a number, and then I need to bring down my exponent of u, and then lower it by 1, which will make it go down to minus 1 half, and then du dx, just the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x, and now I can plug in, so I have dy du is just square root of 2 over 2, times u to the minus one half and then du dx is cosine x okay so now i can bring my u to the bottom and go ahead and plug in so i have square root of two all over two and then u to the minus one that's going to go to the bottom and be under a square root and u is just sine of x so i need to put sine of x down here all times cosine of x. Now there are different ways that you could um, write this depending on how you simplify. So you may see it a different way or you may do it slightly differently. But I'm going to multiply by a square root of sine x over square root of sine x. So I'm multiplying by 1. And this is meant to get this si uh, square root of sine x out from the bottom or out from the denominator. Okay, so when I do this, I'm going to get my cosine of x over 2 out front. So 
So I'm bringing this and this out front. And then I'm going to have a square root of 2 times the square root of sine x on top. And that's going to be over square root of sine x times square root of sine x is just sine x on bottom. Well, now I can combine this cosine and the sine and get cotangent x over 2 all times the square root of 2 sine x. Okay, so again, you may see this written in a different way depending on how you simplify, but this is one way to express it where you don't have a radical in the denominator. So in this next example, we don't have the two functions, inner and outer. Instead, we're given p as a function of t, and we need to break it into its inner and outer functions. So when I look at p, I see something that is under a cube root. And then what is that something? Well, it's 3t minus t squared, okay? So now if I want the derivative of this function p with respect to t, which is the original variable, then I need to first take the derivative of p with respect to u and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to t. And my du's will go away and give me dp dt. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this cube root of u, this is just u to the one-third, so dp du will just be, bring down my one-third, and then I need to subtract one from this exponent, so that's going to be minus two-thirds, and then du dt will be three for this first term, and then minus two t for the minus t squared, and now I can just plug in. So dp du, this is one-third u to the minus two-thirds times three min minus two t. And now I have three minus two t in the denominator over three, and I've got to bring my u to the bottom since it's a negative exponent. And it's going to be a cube root since the cube, since the three is on the bottom of the fraction exponent. And then u is going to be squared, so u is 3t minus t squared. And all of that has to be squared because of this 2, again, in the exponent. And that's our answer. For our next function, we have s equals cosecant x plus cotangent x, all raised to the minus 1 power. So, again, I need to write s as a composition of two functions. So... I have, I see s is something raised to the minus first power, and then that u, what I'll call u, or the inside, is cosecant of x plus cotangent x. So now if I want the derivative of my function s with respect to the original variable x, I need to first take the derivative of s with respect to u, and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. So, ds du will be just minus u to the minus 2. And then du dx will be the derivative of cosecant, which is just minus cosecant x cotangent x, plus the derivative of cotangent, which is minus cosecant squared x. So now I can just plug in. So I have minus u to the minus 2 times a minus cosecant x cotangent x minus cosecant squared x. Okay. And now I need to distribute. So minus signs are going to make all of this positive. And then this u squared is going to come to the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to write my... Denom uh, my numerator first, so I have cosecant, positive cosecant x, cotangent x, plus cosecant squared x, since my minus sign is canceled, and then I have u squared on the bottom, and u from before is just cosecant x plus cotangent x, okay? Well, now I can factor out a cosecant from each term on top. So I get cosecant x times cotangent x plus cosecant x all over cosecant x plus 
cotangent x quantity squared. Now one of these is going to go away and that will leave me with cosecant x all over cosecant x plus cotangent x. Well, in this last problem, we have y equals 1 over 27 times 4x minus 3 raised to the ninth power plus 5 minus 1 over 3x squared raised to the second power. So, if you notice, you're going to have to do the chain rule for both of these terms. So, now that we've done the chain rule a couple of times, I'm just going to take the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function rather than rewriting all of this and it getting messy. So, I want the derivative of y with respect to x. So, first I'm just going to bring up this number. And then I'm going to treat everything inside the parentheses as though it's like a variable. So if I were to take the derivative of all this, it's something raised to the ninth power. I need to bring down my exponent, and then I'll rewrite that variable, and then lower the exponent by 1. Okay, so this is the derivative of the outer function. Now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which would be 4x minus 3. So the derivative of 4x minus 3 is just 4. Okay, so now this is the derivative of my inner function. Okay, I can do it again. I have the derivative of uh, this, I have the derivative of this thing that's being squared, so I'm going to pull down my exponent and write what would be a variable, lower my exponent by one, which is just one, and now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside, the derivative of five is just zero. And then maybe I want to rewrite this minus um, one over three times x to the minus two. If I take the derivative of this, so the derivative of my inside, it's just gonna be minus one over three. And then I gotta bring down my exponent, so that will be minus 2 times x and subtract 1 or that will go to x to the minus 3 and so this is the derivative of my inside or my outside sorry and this is the derivative of uh, the inside okay so now I just have some cleaning up to do but my derivative is mostly taken so I have 4 times 9 from this first term bringing out my um, my numbers so 4 times 9 is 36 over 27, that's going to reduce nicely, times 4x minus 3 all raised to the 8th, since this is an 8th power, I really can't distribute. And then I'm going to multiply my 2 by everything in this um, second piece. So I have 2 times 2, which is 4, and these minus signs are going to cancel out so over 3, and then this x to the minus 3 is going to go to the bottom and become x to the positive 3, and then that's going to multiply 5 minus 1 over 3x squared. So if you need to do that in more steps, take your time and go through it. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just uh, reduce this out front, so this is going to be 4 thirds, and if you wanted to, there's 4 thirds in both terms, so you could write this as 4 thirds times 4x minus 3 all to the 8th plus 5 minus 1 over 3x squared all over 3x cubed and that would be your final answer. So that's it for the chain rule problems. I hope this helped. It's really good to get comfortable with the chain rule especially before moving on to a pl implicit differentiation which if you're really comfortable with it you'll see that it's really just the chain rule kind of in disguise. So we'll talk about that next time.